And welcome back to this series we're doing on the GTNs and GNS series from Reality XP. Now, what we want to be covering with this episode and a bunch of the others is going to be all about the GNS series and how to program it when it is a number two. The 530 I built with a controller, in this case an Arduino that I programmed, but that part irrelevant. If you want to, you can program these things with an Arduino, or you can get simple button box controllers, or even take an old joystick apart and rewire it. Doesn't matter, it's not hard to do. But if you built your own, or if you bought a unit, and that unit also uses some type of a joystick controller, when you set up the Reality XP GNS as the number two unit, I only have one unit from Real Sim Gear which is the 750, it runs as my number one. So my number two is the GNS 530. As covered previously, there is a section in the manual that explains how to do the programming. And that section is very good. It's really quick, it's really short. You could say there's not enough examples, so I'm going to show you how I did it with SPAD next. As always, everything is so much better when you're flying, so let's just go ahead and get ourselves up into the air, and we're just gonna keep the 530. All right, so we've got our flap set, we've got our landing light on, we have our lights on, we are good to go. Heading checks out, altitude will go up to like 4,000, sure, why not? All right, we are rolling. We're gonna go ahead and just put the uh, put the autopilot on. One of the things that we need to do is we need to use a piece of software uh, that's gonna do our programming. It's gonna help us with the programming. I use spad.next. Big fan of spad.next. I think it works fantastic. Uh, can't complain about it whatsoever. You can make profiles, that profile here for my Bonanza, I've attached a whole bunch of different planes to it. Makes my life great. I'm sure these bad people would love this. All right, so I have my device. Shows up under, not under panels, only the uh, switch panel does. Everything else is all different types of controllers, so it shows up as a controller. So here we've got our 530 COM2. Now that's because I named the device, so I just went to rename and I renamed it. Not a big deal. Now in my device settings, everything is set as a push button, uh, so I can give it more controls if I want. And I currently have the axes active, though I probably shouldn't, but that's a whole uh, separate thing to discuss. So what you're gonna notice first is, so my button number one. Uh, button number one, I press it, uh, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, obviously, uh, and I see a click. So here, this was the part that caught me at first. So it still uses the same GPS zoom out but I needed to put in a parameter of something other than zero. And this is why I'm saying you can't do it inside of the SIM. So in the SIM, you'd uh, bind the button uh, to GPS zoom out, but it doesn't allow you to add the parameter uh, information. So by setting that parameter information, it's giving us the extra ability to control it as in to uh, access more commands that the Reality XP GNS is going to interpret. So in this one little section they got on page 19, they have these things called command modifiers. So it's telling us that all of these commands, when you use the standard zero, so you don't add the modifier, they'll do the standard button press element. So here, they give you the example to explain that bit two, press and hold the button if set. Bit three, release the button if set. And then bit four is send the commands instead to GPS unit number two. Here, what happens is, you know, for GPS one message button, you would just send the zero. Uh, you wouldn't do anything else, you just send zero. But with the same button being pressed for 
GPS number two, I gotta change that value from a zero to an eight. With the enter key, it has a press and hold event. So obviously the press would be an eight, but if I wanted the enter key to have a press and hold. So this is helpful when we get to like the message button, probably the terrain button, but especially for the message button, being able to press and hold to clear it. Eight, 10, and then a 12, as you can see. So here you'd be adding the two and the eight to get to 10, and you'd be adding the three and the eight to get to 12. So for the GPS number two, you have a few more message commands that you'd be sending. My understanding is if it was GPS number one, a two and a four. So a two would be the same, that would be the press and hold, and a four would be the release command. So once you get your head wrapped around that, it makes it a whole lot easier to set up the controls. So in my case, what we've got button on the first one, and that is the top button, that's the zoom out button. So we did zoom out, set the parameter of eight. So now that's sending it to the second GPS. My second button was the zoom in button. Same thing, parameter of eight, away I went. Next button brings up the direct two. That is the direct two button, only we're sending it to number eight because like here, there's a direct two button on the GTN and when I press it, that is the equivalent of sending a zero. Then I program the menu button with parameter eight. So again, if we hit the menu button, cancel direct to nav. So if we hit the clear button, I'll get out of there. But if we hit the menu button, it brings up our menu, press it again, it goes away. Excellent. Button five is the clear. And again, we've got just a simple press it. Then we got our enter button. Again, I'm using uh, just the eight, that works well. Now we go to our nearest button. This is the GPS uh, nearest button. Ironically, this button here. And the nearest, for some reason, is the command that we use uh, with the 530 to go ahead and be the CDI key. So that's our, um, that's our, our CDI key. And then of course, the next button is the OBS button. And so OBS does use the OBS button just with the command eight. And then what we've got, the ability to do a button down event and a button up event. I found, instead of programming it with a 10 and 12, I actually found it easier to send the button down event for the message button on the first press. On the second press, it would release. Don't know why, but I found that this seemed to feel a little bit more fluid. I just found it uh, a little bit easier. Short press being uh, the on and the hold and a long press being the let go, but I found this worked really, really well for me. And so I just left it at that. Then we got our flight plan button, parameter eight. Then we've got our terrain button. This is a VNAV button, but it can also be the terrain button for uh, terrain inhibiting. We could switch and select the VNAV button instead. And so with the VNAV button, uh, it will take you to the vertical navigation page so that you can set up your VNAV profile and it will give you the four nautical miles before, your target altitude is a thousand feet, four nautical miles before, and it'll give you your send profile. So you could set up your VS profile and probably be able to say that my VS to be at a thousand feet. Now we've got ourselves how long before and it's gonna tell us roughly what it's gotta do to create a VNAV profile. There you go, now you got the VNAV button. Our procedures button. So again, what's great, as you're pressing the button, you see it show up inside of spad.next. Same exact thing, GPS procedure button, event eight, not a problem. For the cursor buttons, so there's cursor button 15, which means my comm swap is on 13. What you're able to do with it is just use the standard comm2 radio swap event, works just fine. Uh, same thing with the nav2 radio swap. And because those are standard commands to the second radio, you don't have to put in any extra uh, data. 
because again, it's not like the GPS where the simulator does not support events for GPS one and then separate events for GPS two. You have to use these um, these bits, as he's calling them, to, uh, to to trick it. So our GPS button one is the cursor, and again, well, how do you know it's GPS button one? Well, if we go back into that document that we were looking at and we scroll down to page 18, GPS button one, it tells us that that is the comm nav toggle. These five were extra buttons, I guess, that were added into the simulator by Microsoft way back when, and they just gave them random numbers. These were in addition. So this is for a 530, right? The rest of the buttons all make sense on a 500 pushing the button is going to toggle the unit between the VLOC and the COM. And then you'll see, this is just how I wired up my Arduino. I wired up encoders to specific pins because these are rotary encoders. They do not operate like a button. You have to put special button handlers around it. Now, luckily Arduino, there's tons of, of libraries out there and there was a great encoder.h library made it easy to program. Fractional frequency, up and down. This is doing the whole frequency up and down, right? So that's your four things that you have programmed. So you'll see button four, button five. So four and five is the little knob. And then you've got three and two is your big knob. And so once you've wired everything up and programmed it, now you got your 530 working great. And then same thing over here. You're gonna see that 27 is the page knob decrease, 28 is my page knob increase, 26 is group, so the outer knob. Uh, then you got your group increase, so the outer knob button 16, that was the cursor button. So the right knob cursor button. As you can see, this is real simple once you understand the concept of how those bits work. And once you've added it, there is nothing better than that feeling of being able to go ahead and, you know, hit that direct to button, uh, be able to dial up your preferred location of where you wanna go. So here we'll go to KLAX, right? Outer knob, not having to use a mouse and a wheel just gives you that flow and that effect exactly how you would expect. There's one more piece when you're trying to use two different GPSs in the system. This one was a little bit harder to figure out. And luckily, again, it's really all because of, of SPAD Next. There is a variable and it does talk about it. So what I did there was I took these switches and I took a switch that has three places, but it looks like three buttons. So here what we needed to do was set the RXP GPS master LVAR. So I went and found the RXP.GPS master device. You'll see it has a strange value. What I was having an issue with was trying to figure out what the value was to use in it. So instead of setting a specific value, I instead told it, find a value of the GTN unit one and GTN unit two. We now have a GNS unit two and we have a GTN unit one. So here's your two values for it to be able to pick between. So that'll go to GNS two, that'll go to GTN one, is what's figuring out to copy it into that master device. So by setting those, so that they select based on that variable, it automatically puts the correct value. And, and I found that to be the quickest, easiest way. Unfortunately, that weird value that it's creating, I, I, I literally have no idea how that value uh, is sorting itself out and, and deciding to be you know, 82, 55, 71, 143. So, and there's nowhere in the settings. It would be really great if somewhere in the settings we could tell it what we wanted that value to be. Like, I don't know, zero, one, two, three. That would probably be a lot easier. But to get it to do it, I had to get this value. So that's what we did there to set up 
uh, selectors. So now we've got the two selectors to pick between the two, in this case, a GTN and a GNS. Let's go into flight plan and we're gonna go to um, KRIV. We'll go KRIV. KRIV. We'll look at our map and we will see that that's where it wants us to be. So if we flick that switch, it now changed what is driving the autopilot. So it is now using the GTN 750 now as the choice for the autopilot. So now this is going to fly to L65 and then it would fly up to KRIV. If we switch it back over, now it's going to take its information from the GNS 530 instead. Hopefully this shows you using spad.next how to do it. I'm sure it's not too uh, much more difficult with something like FSUIPC, uh, but unfortunately I am not uh, a big fan. Uh, FSUIPC is pretty cool. I played with it in the early days of when I was first starting out in the flight sim. But when I found spad.next, there was no comparison. Um, spad.next just makes it really easy to program. You can set all kinds of variables. You can set uh, conditional elements so much easier. Uh, I'm just, I really am a big fan. I think it's a great product. Uh, when you tie it in with these Reality XP products as well, you can see how you've got the flexibility. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come see us next time when maybe we'll do something that gets put in the comments. So, thanks for watching.